So welcome back to another episode of 5 Minutes with Cyril. <clears throat> I want to talk today about intrinsic camera calibration. So what is intrinsic calibration? Uh, what does that mean? And actually, how does that work? So camera calibration means that we want to estimate the parameters that kind of sit inside your camera and describe us how a point from the 3D world is mapped onto the 2D image plane. And the goal of calibration is that we know for every pixel the precise direction vector from the um, origin of our camera, so the uh, prediction center of our camera, into the 3D world. And if we have this precise angular information, then we know where a point is located on a ray um, if we see a point in our 2D image. And um, what we need to, in order to determine these intrinsic camera parameters is actually a mathematical model on how a point from the 3D world is mapped onto the 2D image plane. We typically assume a pinhole camera um, and also assume a so-called model of an affine camera. That means um, a mapping that can be expressed in this form over here. So lowercase x is the point in the image. K is a calibration matrix which contains all these intrinsic parameters. So what we want to do is we actually want to estimate K over here. R is a rotation matrix telling us where the camera is actually looking to and x0 is the location of our projection center and this block in the end is a projection matrix because we are mapping a point from the 3D world onto the 2D image plane. And uppercase x is finally an arbitrary point in the 3D world. And we can determine the calibration matrix k also by using a technique called direct linear transform where we estimate k, r and x0. But for that, we need to know the location of at least six points in the 3D world with their x, y, z location. And that can be a bit limiting. Therefore, alternative calibration methods have been proposed. I'm talking here about the method proposed by Tsang, which uses a checkerboard pattern. So a pattern of black and white tiles that um, sits on a flat surface and that you picture with your camera. And based on this pattern, you can actually estimate your calibration matrix K. And Tsang's method basically uses a nice trick. What it does, it sets a global coordinate system for every image and places it in a specific location inside your checkerboard pattern. And it sets up the coordinate system in a way that the normal of the checkerboard pattern is the Z direction. That means all the crossings between the black and the white tiles lie in the XY plane of your global coordinate system that mean they are X location is that location is zero and the XY location is known because we assume to know the size of those tiles. And that means for every image we define an own global coordinate system, picture that camera and then can use this information to derive constraints about my calibration matrix out of it. So the approach how that works, how I can actually estimate the calibration matrix K is quite similar to the approach um, of the direct linear transform. So what we are doing additionally here is we are exploiting that the um, points that we are picturing on the checkerboard all have a z-coordinate which is zero. And then I can start with a model of the affine camera, say I know where the point is in the 3D world, I know where it is on my image plane because I kind of know the pixel coordinate when I'm running a corner detector um, on my image. And um, then I can derive constraints from that, can set up a homogeneous system, can exploit a few constraints about um, the rotation matrix, and then can solve this system that in the end results me in a calibration matrix K. So by picturing checkerboards, at least three images, but typically I need more in practice, um, I can actually obtain my calibration matrix K. So what you in practice as a user have, have to do is you print out your checkerboard pattern, for example, with your printer on an A4 paper, glue it on a flat surface, and then you show it in front of your camera and you do the so-called calibration dance and record a couple of images. You feed this through your algorithm which, algorithm, which exactly does what I was explaining before, and then outputs your camera calibration uh, matrix. And then you have a calibrated camera. In practice, however, you have a lens which causes some extra distortions um, to the mapping process. For example, a barrel distortion is one example for a nonlinear distortion. And that's something that the simple calibration matrix doesn't handle. So if you have other forms of distortion, such as barrel distortion or um, other types, um, you need to actually be able to write them down, so specify a model, how it affects the coordinates um, of, the, of your pixels. And then you can actually run this through a bigly squares um, approach and try to estimate also the nonlinear parameters here called Q in, and um, estimate those parameters in order to correct your mapping process. 
In the most general form, this leads basically to a correction for every single pixel. So every single pixel may have an individual correction how the coordinate of that pixel should be shifted a little bit in the x and y direction in my image plane in order to provide a perfect geometric mapping. I hope that was useful and gave you an idea of what intrinsic camera calibration is. Maybe it gave you an even idea how we can actually solve it and most importantly um, why it is important um, because we, it allows us to do 3D reconstruction in a more easy way because we know precisely which pixel corresponds to which direction in space. And you can also use this to correct your images, so you have distorted images and you know, can perform, you apply your calibration matrix K, you can actually correct the um, pixel locations and then um, have effects that straight lines are against straight lines, for example. That's it. Thank you very much for your attention.